In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we're going to look at how to make the motion of an object that you're moving with position, rotation, or scale values more fluid using the Ease In and Ease Out options. Let me describe what we mean. We're going to try to move this truck across the screen using keyframing. We'll give you a link to our basic tutorial on how to use keyframes, but you'll get a little bit of review in this particular lesson. So I have the clip with the truck on it. I'm going to double click on it to get into my PIP designer. And then if I want to make it look like it's moving across the screen, I'll simply change the value of the position at two points in time. That's keyframing. So I go to my position uh, scale here, and at the beginning we'll click a diamond. And that sets the position where we find the truck to start with. Then we'll go ahead and we're going to move maybe, oh, six seconds in or so. And I'll click a diamond again, and that will set a second position value. Now as we start out, both of these values are the same, so if I play this clip, the truck won't move. But with the second keyframe highlighted, I'm going to go ahead and move the truck down to the lower right quadrant. And then when we move our time indicator to the beginning and hit the play key in the preview screen, we see the truck apparently move from point A to point B. When it gets to the second keyframe, it will freeze. There's no other keyframes. So that's what a keyframe does when you change a position value. But let's assume we wanted the truck to begin to move very slowly, not evenly, but very slowly to start out, or we want it to end very slowly. So the motion is not going to be equal between point A and point B. One way we could do this, we could, could go ahead and move the slider and click on the diamond on the position value and add another position and say, well, I want it to slow down so I'll back it up a little bit from where it was. And I'll click another keyframe. I'll move my time indicator and set another diamond and say, no, we'll back it up a little bit more. And we can manually slow down the movement here. I click a diamond on this level here and back it up. Okay, now it's going to be slower at the first part. I've artificially slowed the uh, algorithm that, that goes from point A to point B. And then from my fourth keyframe on, it will be a steady, uh, consistent movement. So if I go ahead and play it, I've slowed it down, but notice how jerky it looks. And so I've gotten part of the effect I'm after, but at kind of a cost I don't want to pay. So I'm going to control Z out of this and remove those three keyframes. And let's look at a different way to do that. When I look at keyframing on position and look on the left side in the menu under object settings, I have a box that says ease in and one that says ease out. So let's begin with that. I'm going to move my time indicator to the initial keyframe. The safest way to do that is not to use the mouse on the slider. It's to click the, the, the diamond, which goes between one keyframe and another keyframe, the little triangle. And so I'm, my, I'm on the first keyframe. And notice here, it ease out, ease in is grayed out. And this is where I think the labels of these, for me, is opposite of what it ought to be. I would think in would be where it starts and out would be where it finishes, but it's the opposite. Ease out affects the beginning motion of an object. So I'm going to click on ease out, and the default setting is 0 0.40. Now if I go ahead and play it, watch what happens. It will be a slower start, and then it will pick up speed. but it's nice and fluid. Let's go ahead and change the value of ease out to the maximum of 1.0, and then you'll see it in a more dramatic way. Very slow to start with, and then it picks up speed. Now the thing to note is that when you're using ease in and ease out, it does not change uh, when it gets to the final location. It just means it starts out more slowly. 
I'm going to turn that one off and we'll look at the other option which is ease in which is at the end of the clip. So we'll have the car move normal speed until it gets near the end of the trajectory closer to this keyframe and now I can click on the ease in button and it will change. Let's look and see what this looks like. We'll play it now normal speed and then it slows to the end. But at this moment in time, at six seconds, it will still do exactly what I told it to do earlier. I'm going to remove all these keyframes right now and show you another feature about this, this kind of a tool. Sometimes we, we wonder what difference does it make. So we're going to click down here in this clip where I have two vehicles. And what we'll do is we'll take the ease in on one and the ease out on another. I'm going to move down here. We'll start with the Mercedes. I'll double click on that object. And they both start and stop at the same time. What I'm going to do with the Mercedes, I'll be on my first keyframe and I'll do the ease out. And then I'll click on OK. Then I'll go to my PIP designer by double clicking on my truck. And here I'll move to the second keyframe and I'll call this, make this an ease in. I'll actually increase it so it's more dramatic here. And we'll click on OK. Now watch what happens. Both objects have the same starting point in time, the same ending point in time, but you'll notice because one has applied to ease in and the other to ease out that they will start and stop at a kind of a different fluid pace. We'll click on movie and we'll play it. Watch what happens. The truck is moving at normal speed but then slows down and now the Mercedes is, is slowing down at the beginning and moving at normal speed. If you look very carefully you notice that they actually reach their final destination at the same time because we have the same keyframe setting for when they end. It's just how they get there that's different. The truck starts out faster, but it stops earlier, slows down at the very end. Notice I gave it a very long delay. If I were to go back and take the truck and move it to the same measurement that we had the car on, the point four, we'll move back here, Instead of 8.5, we'll go back to 0.4. Then they'll look a lot more similar in terms of how they move. So that variation makes a big difference. So it starts out faster, Mercedes starts out, but at the end, when they're all done moving, it's, they stop at the same moment in time. So if you want to be a little bit fluid in terms of motion, that's how you do that. Let me add a couple other options here. We're going to uh, change the objects we're looking at. This applies to position. Now you can also apply it to rotation or scale. Let's take uh, this truck and say we want to be on the scale. We'll hit a keyframe at the beginning and move over a few seconds here, about four, and set another keyframe. And at the second keyframe we will make this a lot bigger. And then we can normally uh, play it and it just swells in size from point A to point B. But again, if we look on our left side, if we look on scale, we have an ease in and an ease out. We'll use the ease in and this will affect the ending of it. And so now when we play that same thing using the scale keyframes, it slows down at the very end. And that's a, nice, that's a nice feature. That's a nice way to look. Let me give you another option here. We'll click on OK. We'll go back to another copy of our Mercedes. And this time we're going to use rotation. And so uh, I'll double click on it and get into my PIP designer. We're going to slide down to our rotation option. We'll set a keyframe at the beginning. Another one about uh, five seconds into it. And set another keyframe. Go back to the first keyframe and we'll have it at normal. I will move this down so I see the rotation options. Notice I have an ease in and ease out. 
To start with, it's not rotating. We'll go to the second keyframe and we'll have it rotate spin around twice. So we'll type in 720, that's double 360. And if we go ahead and play that without any modifications, it just spins twice at an even speed and then it stops. But one thing I'm going to do now, I'm going to move to the second keyframe. We'll do an ease in and I'll maximize this so it's the slowest. And watch what happens now. It will start spinning and then it will slow the spin as it gets toward the second keyframe. There and it slows down. So you can use the ease in and ease out on position, rotation, or scale. You can also do both of them on the same clip. You can start in with an ease out and you can end the clip with an ease in if you so wish to do that. But that's how that gives you a little bit more fluid motion in your production in CyberLink PowerDirector.